Hey guys, hope you guys are enjoying Coupon. Uh, thanks for joining in in this maintainer track. So we'll be talking about uh, Litmus Chaos. Uh, we are the maintainers of Litmus Chaos. You'll see about us page soon, but this is our talk, uh, bringing fire in the cloud, which is uh, talking about managed services, because most of us use managed services to manage our Kubernetes workloads. So we'll be specifically looking into what causes problems in managed services and how we can mitigate them using Litmus, and we'll also talk about Litmus, so those of you who are Litmus users or new to Litmus uh, should uh, you know, get a good experience around it and then probably, hopefully, start contributing and be a part of the community. So this is us. I am Shine, and he is Shuvam. I'm a senior software engineer at Harness and also a maintainer of uh, Litmus, and Shuvam. Uh, I'm, I'm also senior software engineer at Harness and maintainer at Litmus. Cool, so we both will be sharing some litmus wisdom, <laughs> hopefully. And let me start by jumping into the dependency dilemma that we face today. So a uh, lot of us use managed services, a lot of us are reliant on managed services because not everybody has everything on-prem, like their own data center and everything, it's costly, so a lot of people use uh, managed services. Now the problems that we get is a lack of control, obviously, because we have limited visibility on what they're providing us, so we base our services based on something that's theirs. So that is one thing, lack of control, which we don't like. Second is the vendor lock-in. Uh, you might argue that we don't really have vendor lock-in since we have uh, our systems set up in multiple clouds, so that way we can pull everything out from one, shift it to the other. But there's definitely a vendor lock-in because the layer between your services and the actual vendor providing it is opaque to you guys. So there is a vendor lock-in. Uh, because there are proprietary technologies that they are using, which might not be open to you in the backend. And then there's a trust issue, obviously. So the availability, reliability, uh, uptime, everything is based on what they promise you. But yeah, it's a trust factor. Cool. So before jumping into chaos engineering, this is a scare slide because outages are expensive. And these are some experiments. I'm not calling anybody out, trust me. But yeah, these are some of the actual uh, outages that had happened. And this causes a, sort of a, you know, a fear or what do we say? We don't really like having outages because of things like this. Uh, it's very costly to the business. It's very costly to uh, the developers, the employer, like the, you know, the company in general, because it doesn't not, uh, not only does it affect the uh, company reputation, but also the lack of customer confidence in you, and also the employee—you uh, know—the employee confidence in the own, in its own org. So to mitigate this, we have chaos engineering, which is a generally practiced, uh, uh, you know, solution or a remedy as of now. It was not very a few years before, but now it's growing way up into the maturity model. And so, what exactly is it? So what we suggest doing is. Uh, or what generally is chaos, is chaos engineering is a practice of deliberately uh, injecting disruptions in your system to test uh, how they behave. Is your system even resilient? Is it not? Uh, if something happens, is does it have the ability to come back up? So all those kind of things we can test via chaos engineering. Now, what are the principles that typically uh, we should be adhering to when we talk about chaos engineering, it's you should have a system to test, first of all, obviously, and then you need to simulate certain experiments. So this has to be specific to your use case. You should uh, specifically select certain faults, chain them together, and then kind of be able to create a hypothesis around it. Then you have to run the chaos experiments on the targeted system, observe using monitoring, APM tools, observability, and then use those learnings to improve your system. So this is the entire uh, you know cycle of chaos engineering that we uh, advocate. So um, now, the more the better, but it's a little scary because the more chaos you do, the more expensive it is, and the more chaos you do, the more things you break. So it's not really the perfect thing to advocate, but it is also the perfect thing to advocate because you are really making your system very rely uh, re reliable, and uh, there's less and less amount of outages that you would expect, or you would be more reliable reliant on. Uh, your own services uptime when an actual chaos happens, when an actual outage happens. So, uh, the things about quality, speed, and developer productivity, you can, I mean, this in turn advocates the functionality of uh, 
better pro developer productivity in case of how much time is being saved by the developer not having to go around and figure out what went wrong, make things back up again. Also, the speed at which you do this. If you keep doing it again and again in game days, uh, you know, you, you, you know in, in every set intervals, you would basically be much more uh, resilient towards things happening. Uh, so your speed at uh, deploying, releasing, the cadence would of course increase. And also the quality, if you have chaos, your quality is definitely better because you're definitely better than the others who aren't practicing this. Next. Cool, so now jumping into the context. So these, uh, this is uh, something I specifically wanted to talk about to give you an example of how you might look in for a vendor lock-in system. So a lot of people are dependent or using managed services today and managed services is very good because it gives you everything out of the box. You just plug and play, you use it. It's easy to use, easy to manage. But there's this thing, right? There's a layer. You don't really know uh, what's inside, what's the proprietary uh, tool or what's the infra they're using. It's generally an opaque space. We're just using it. We are relying on them and maybe it's good. It's 100% uptime, but it's really hard to believe. There's something that might break somewhere and you have to figure out or you have to wait for them to fix it and then your systems might get back up. So you are doing everything, you're practicing chaos engineering, you're doing 100% right, everything uh, perfect, but it, it's, on the, it's on this side of the line, not on this side of the line. So we are trying to uh, advocate doing something which includes, which includes breaking stuff, not just on what you see, what's visible to you, but also on the entire infra, whether or not it's opaque to you or visible. Ooh, so some of the examples, this is not um, what we will be showing you guys today, but this is a reference to what you can do or what I mean by the previous slide. So some of the scenarios where chaos engineering might apply to a system specifically AWS specific or specifically managed service specific is let's say your RDS failing over. So you might have a data uh, fallback mechanism you might have load balancing, higher availability, or scalability issues. So these kind of things you can test via chaos engineering, uh, specifically in the database context for the EC2, because EC2 is a widely used service. So you can check if there's impact on failure, what else, what exactly is impacted when you induce or simulate a failure like that. Uh, also, is it highly recoverable? Also, does it have higher availability? So things like that you can check with a service like EC2. So similarly, there's so many services, you can try so many things. Lastly, I can talk about the Lambda function, which is a serverless. So serverless like, depends a lot on the triggers, depends a lot on the configuration that you provided with. There are multiple layers to serverless, so you might want to check each and every layer, which might be costly, but then it's safer. You can check the triggers or some misconfigurations that might have been caused, which may affect your Lambda, which might affect the performance or might affect the uh, uh, general uh, config configurability of the Lambda function. So let's say if you push in the wrong configuration, your entire Lambda can go down, your entire triggers can go down. So you might want to check the serverless architecture of your Lambda using Chaos Engineering. Cool. So some of the hows of Chaos Engineering. So this were the whys of Chaos Engineering up till now. So why would you want to practice it? But this is the how. So how you can actually practice Chaos Engineering in a context like uh, Lambda or a context like uh, AWS managed services. So there are misconfigurations like I mentioned. So it could be an improper network configuration that may lead to disruptions. It could be inad <coughs> inadequate allocation of resources. So in that case, you might end up spending more or end up spending less than your actual optimum load, which might cause spikes obviously. And then you can have mismanagement of Lambda using either RBAC capabilities, which, are, which shouldn't have been there. You can manage your Lambda effectively by controlling your RBACs by controlling your uh, individual triggers. So a lot could be done, but yeah, this is just a simple list. Now for the database, so this is simulated database. This also includes your services, which are data related, doesn't have to be RDS specific, but yeah. So uh, simulated synthetic load is specifically inducing simulated synthetic load to databases, which can inflate your resource usage. So you might actually can, you can actually check for resource uses, usages in your database is actually hitting what you are aiming for, or is it below that? You can test the scalability, high availability of the data. You can also check uh, if your data loss is actually impacting customers. If it is, what could be the possible solution? Maybe you want a cache service. Maybe you want to 
avoid data loss by storing it somewhere else. Maybe what happens when there's an outage in your database? Where does the data go? So things like that you can kind of wrap around and generally target for services like these. So uh, introducing Litmus. So this is the project uh, we both work on. We are the maintainers, along with a couple of other amazing maintainers. So the project actually started in 2007. So it's, it's started as a 1.0, which is now 3.4. Uh, which is open source, of course, and generally available. Uh, the APIs are open source. The uh, command line is open source. So it, uh, the the project generally uh, is was started as a method for SREs to you know observe and uh, look into chaos engineering and some of the easier sort of chaos and you know breaking <coughs> storage, uh, open EBS, how we can mitigate that. But then it kind of uh, got a lot of traction from the uh, community, and we shifted it to a much larger project. So it's currently an incubating project uh, as of now in the CNCF. And uh, the main objective is to install Litmus as a uh, as an on-premise solution in your cluster, in your customer's cluster, and then use it to find uh, vulnerabilities in terms of you know chaos vulnerabilities like chaos uh, inducing chaos using multiple faults, and figure out what's wrong in your system, and then of course, improve the re uh, reliability or resiliency of it. So yeah, that's Litmus for you. It's a growing community and would love if you guys, uh, if you're not already, we are part of the community. So next, I'd like to hand it over to Shubham. He can specifically talk about AWS chaos and uh, move forward. Uh, hi, uh, I hope all, all of you can hear me. So in uh, Litmus, we have a Litmus SDK where uh, you can generate your new experiment so you can, uh, based on your hypothesis or use case, you can uh, create a new experiment. And once the experiment is created, you can upload that experiment to, or the charts to the Chaos Hub, uh, which is your custom hub. So uh, in default hub, we uh, have 50 plus experiments. So based on your use case, if you want to create a new experiment, uh, you can generate that experiment and upload your chart to your hub and then uh, you can use that. You can connect to our front end and then uh, from the front end you can uh, run that experiment. Uh, to generate a new experiment from the Litmus SDK, we have, uh, uh, in the left-hand side, you can see we have a couple of steps. So uh, mainly it is, uh, first step is to check the steady state check. Uh, so based on your application, if you are, uh, uh, if it is a Kubernetes, you can check the, uh, it's, if it is a Kubernetes pod, then you can check the pod statuses. If it is uh, AWS instance, you can check status. So uh, you can check the status of your targets, or uh, if uh, there is any other SLO, or if you want to verify, you can run the probes in ISOT mode. The next step is uh, inject chaos. So based on your use case, you can uh, uh, based on uh, you can run the exact uh, business logic of your chaos experiment as part of chaos inject, which will run for a specific duration, which is chaos duration. And once the chaos duration is over then it will be reverted. So you can update your revert chaos step. So which is an optional in case of many services, if the, uh, the chaos will be, uh, let's say if you are uh, stopping some service, which should be uh, ideally started by the many service, then you do not need to write a revert step. But if uh, it is not a many service, and then you need to write the revert chaos step as well. Then next step is a uh, steady state check, same check, whatever we are doing in a pre-chaos. So after the chaos is over, you can check the steady state check in the post chaos as well. And the final step is uh, we are, uh, I mean, this we do not need to do. It's, uh, it's will, uh, it will automatically generate it. But yeah, last step to uh, give you all the reports, uh, the results. So it will give you the target details where the chaos, chaos is injected. It will give you the historical uh, run as well. If you're running a same chaos experiment multiple time, it will give you the report uh, for those things as well. And if you are running the probes, then it will give you the probe detail as well, your resiliency score or the probe, uh, if probe is failing, then why it is failing, all the status and everything. And in the right hand side, uh, we, are just take, uh, we are just taking a simple experiments example here. So uh, uh, in, the blue, uh, in the yellow box, you can see uh, it is, uh, we, are, we are stopping a uh, EC2 instance, which is part of our auto scaling group. And we just wanted to create a uh, experiment for that. So we can uh, try to understand uh, the, uh, how to generate the experiment for this, uh, this specific scenario. So the first step is uh, the steady state check, which we see in the generic flow. So for, the, for, uh, for this experiment, we can uh, validate the status of EC2 instances. 
and after the validation is done, then uh, second step is to inject the chaos. So as part of chaos injection, we can uh, we can stop the EC2 instances, and uh, because these are part of many services, so we did not need to write the uh, revert logic here. Uh, it will be automatically restarted. But yeah, in the post chaos, we need to check the steady state validation for that. We can verify the instance count, uh, which should be uh, like because it uh, auto scaling is enabled, so it should be like uh, after the like uh, once the chaos is over, after the duration, it should come back. So we are just checking the count of uh, those number of instances. And uh, this is uh, the actual generation part. Uh, so we uh, in the Litmus SDK we have attribute.yml where you can provide the experiment details mainly the name of experiment and RBAC permission, whatever will be the required. And there are a lot of uh, uh, parameters. You can tune those values. Once the, once the, once the attribute.yml, you have tuned the value, then you can uh, generate the experiment by litmus SDK. So you can use the generate experiment command with support uh, multiple type of experiments. So we have template for a different, different type. So we have template for Kubernetes, AWS, GCP, Azure, VMware. So based on your type, you can provide in uh, minus T flag. Uh, for In my case, I'm using AWS here. And then you can provide in minus F the attribute.yml file path. So based on this in uh, this input, it will generate the ex experiment uh, file where, you, where the orchestration logic is there. It will generate a chaos lift file where the actual business logic is there. And it will create the configuration file as well. So once the experiment will be created, uh, uh, so it will it will uh, write it will automatically generate uh, the uh, main flow of the fault. But the actual business logic or our actual steady state check we need to add. So in the right hand side you can see the to do items. So uh, we will create a to do item for pre chaos and the business logic and revert chaos and uh, post chaos. So based on your uh, scenario or your hypothesis, you can update the. Uh, all these to do items. So, uh, for example, for EC2 stop, we saw all these uh, steady state validation and check your step. So, we can update those, uh, these steps in this to do item. And then uh, we, we, will, we can validate the experiment. Uh, once the experiment is tested in our local and it is working fine, then we can uh, generate the charts. So, we can use the generate chart command, which will generate the we are using uh, chaos engine and chaos experiment custom resources. So chaos experiments contain the experiment related tunables. And chaos engine will, uh, will use to bind the experiment with the application. So it will contain the application detail, which you can uh, configure from the UI. Uh, so uh, in the UI, we have a visual representation as well as the YAML rep representation. And both will be always in sync. So if you will change anything in the visual, it will automatically update in the YAML and vice versa. So and thus, uh, there is a chart service version, which is the CSV file, which will be used by the hub uh, for the visual representation, all the mapping in all. So uh, once you will generate the chart, it will create all these three uh, files. Then you can uh, upload these files to the chaos hub. So for chaos hub, we have a chaos chart repo. So in chaos chart repo, we have those 50 faults. You can clone that repo, and you can uh, upload these files to that uh, uh, chaos chart repo. In, in your own uh, uh, fogged repo or uh, uh, any any other branch of chaos charts and then you can connect that hub to the ui and in the ui you will see your fault and you can directly run it from the ui so that is all about the litmus sdk how you can generate a new experiment uh, for your uh, use case so next thing is uh, 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 update about the litmus uh, recently uh, updates so we have recently re released the litmus 3.0 so as part of Litmus 3.0, we have uh, improved the uh, UI. So all the user experience had been changed. And we have updated the uh, Chaos SDK as well. We have uh, introduced the Chaos SDK, where the experiment create and, uh, creation logic has been changed from 2.0. It is now simplified. Uh, user can uh, uh, directly run their, uh, I mean, seamlessly run their faults. Uh, the next thing is uh, uh, resiliency probe. So uh, earlier, we have a probes to validate the SLOs. Those probes uh, was one-to-one -one mapping with the fault. But now, with the Litmus 3.0, you can create a fault once, and you can uh, reuse it for the, all the experiments. And in the resiliency probe, you can see all the experiments, and you can track the historical data for individual probe as well. And next thing is, uh, we have 
and at the high availability for the mongo so we we are using mongo db to store all the data so we have uh, added the high availability support for the mongo db uh, uh, next item is uh, we uh, for the network fault we have added a enhancement where uh, earlier it was blocking the traffic for the specific ip or specific host now you can uh, block the traffic for the uh, uh, source port and destination port as well as well as for a specific ip if you wanted to uh, block a traffic for uh, all uh, i mean earlier it was blocking traffic for all port but right now you can uh, block our traffic for all i mean specific port as well and uh, if you or you can add a denied or a block list as well if you wanted to block a traffic for all port except specific port you can give a comma separated value in that uh, uh, env then it will block it will uh, restrict those uh, uh, ports uh, from the chaos injection then we uh, recently we are added a unit test in the first test to check the our uh, to increase the code uh, code coverage for the testing and uh, we have integrated the uh, we have a litmus ctl which is a cli to connect the hub and all, for all the crude operation for the litmus to uh, run the experiments and all those things so we have uh, integrated the probes uh, as well so probe is for the slo validation so now you can perform the crude operation for the probe with the litmus ctl command as well uh these are our item for the uh, future road map so uh, litmus core core means execution plane side the experiments uh, side so so right now we are passing the security context i mean uh, in the ui we have an option to pass the security context uh, for the experiment but right now we were pa not passing it to the probe pod for the slo validation and the helper pod so if uh, so now uh, as part of future roadmap we are planning this item so it it, it will be propagated to the probe and the helper pod as well uh, next uh, right now for the pod memory hog experiment which will which spike the memory of your pod uh, here uh, we are supporting right now the we are taking the value in the bytes uh, how much memory you want to consume or you want to spike so we we will uh, we we will support the percentage as well so out of the total uh, requested memory or uh, the locket memory to a pod you can provide the percentage as well based on that percentage it will uh, uh, consume that much memory and uh, uh, in 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 the current implementation of a target selection so when you are running a fault for, for as application so you can uh, you can filter the pod by app app kind which is deployment stateful set daemon set all those kinds and then you can uh, provide the name space and then you can uh, configure the label as well so now the enhancement we want to do is we can uh, support the only by app kind so if you will provide the deployment without the label then it will uh, randomly select the it's just increasing the blast radius so it's uh, i mean if you want to randomly delete uh, all uh, like uh, without any label if you want to delete all pods which belong to a specific app kind then you can uh, we, we are adding we will add the support as well as uh, uh, for the label without app kind or right now we have we are not supporting the set based labels so we will uh, we will support the set based labels as well uh, uh, next thing is uh, right now we we support a specific uh, uh, workload type uh, deployment stateful set daemon set we have four to five uh, type of workload so we will uh, we will support the controller type as well uh, if you are using a pods which is managed which is not managed by the replica set or the deployment these workload if it, if it is managed by the some controller or uh, operator sdk or some controllers then we can target that pod as well uh, for the probe right now we are running uh, sot and eot probe in a serial so the probe will be run one by one uh, in the serial fashion for the sot and eot modes uh, so we 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 are we are, uh, we, are imp we will implement the uh, to run those probe in a parallel or serial we will uh, we will provide both sequence we can run in the both sequence as well and uh, in in the uh, in the http chaos uh, if if you uh, in the http chaos you can uh, uh, add a latency or the status code failure for all the all the apis available for that application so uh, right now uh, it is i mean it is it will apply the fault for the all the apis so for uh, for the all endpoints so if your application have a readiness and the liveness probe then because it is affecting all the apis then readiness and liveness probe will fail and it will start the pod so right now in that scenario sometimes uh, because the pod will be restarted uh, uh, so it it might uh, it, uh, it it might not revert the chaos sometimes so we we will implement that logic instead of using the pid we can use the sandbox pid so it, which will not 
revert the uh, i mean which which will not or uh, based on the pod reset which will not change so uh, it it will revert uh, always even if your pod got restarted and right now we are running uh, we have a continuous and on chaos probe as well which will uh, continuously run uh, for the whole chaos duration so which will run for the multiple iteration so we will uh, we will add the uh, uh, support for the iteration count as well so it will say uh, it ran for the 20 times and uh, out of these 20 times it will pass uh, i mean out of 20 it's passed 20 times or 8 10 times so we will give that stats as well along with that we will uh, we will improve the verbosity as well so for each iteration uh, in the banners we will add uh, for this iteration uh, it is running and what wh what is the expected code for this iteration what is the actual code for this iteration so that type of verbosity we will add in the authentication uh, j just one more point uh, most of these are the community uh, raised issues or the community uh, raise enhancements. And uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so this one is also from community side. So we will, for the login, we will uh, do the uh, DEX integration. Uh, so for the login uh, thing, from the from the login screen, we, you can uh, log in with the DEX integration as well. Next item are from the UI and the front end side. So <clears throat> uh, in the front end right now, whenever you select a infra on which infra you want to inject the chaos, so right now it will list all the infra. So we will add the grouping based on the environment. So we have an environment uh, for a specific uh, thing, and in, uh, each environment can contain multiple infra. So right now it, it is only showing the infra uh, uh, for uh, from all environment. Then it will show the grouping as well. So they will know if they have a infra, same infra in uh, two different environments. Then it, then you can uh, uniquely uniquely identify which infra is from which environment. And uh, in air gapped environment, uh, uh, right now, uh, the, some, uh, the, if they are connecting a default hub, they were seeing some issues uh, because it is a public uh, uh, URL uh, from the GitHub uh, Chaos Chart repo. So, uh, so uh, I mean, we 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 we, sh we will provide an option to configure it or the uh, I mean, configure it. We can change the URL. We can, you, they can convert the uh, default hub to their own hub by changing the URL. Uh, Based on their where they are where they are hosting the charts, or we can disable the uh, a default uh, chaos hub, and they can connect their own chaos hub uh, for uh, uh, based on where they are hosting that uh, chaos hub. Uh, next uh, set of issue uh, items are from the orchestration. So uh, we, so right now we are we are we are not uh, have the support for the multiple project or multiple owners in the in 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 chaos center the UI. So we will add a multiple project and multiple owner support. So right now, this is a LFX issue. LFX men, uh, mentee is working on this. Uh, next item is uh, uh, for the sub subscriber is our uh, execution plane component, which will which usually uh, communicate with the control plane. Uh, it it pull for the task from the control plane, and whenever it get the task, it execute the task. So we will add a, a, a client certification or custom certificate. Uh, if, if somebody is using HTTPS, then they can uh, have their own certificate as well. So that support we will add in a subscriber. Uh, next item is halt uh, test when control plane is down. So uh, if uh, they are if they are running a, um, they, because they are running litmus in on it is not SAS. They are running in their uh, system uh, in their cluster as well. So if uh, control plane is down, then uh, uh, right now uh, it, it's stuck uh, the experiment is stuck right it, it will not automatically hold the test uh, uh, once the control plane is back they, they will click in the ui then it will hold the experiment so uh, we will add a support to if the communication is break for uh, some uh, de uh, some um, critical value or we will set some value and then it will automatically abort the experiments based on communication breakage uh, and uh, uh, right now uh, we have a infra installation two ways one is a cluster scoped or one is a namespace scoped uh, so in namespace it will allow only in that namespace but in cluster scoped it will list you all the namespaces you can uh, run the chaos in all namespaces but we will add a capability to restrict the uh, some namespaces if you install the litmus in a, a cluster scoped mode but if you do not want it to allow to run in a specific namespace then you can uh, restrict those namespaces. You can add that uh, list that you, you should not inject chaos in the, these namespaces. Uh, then it will not show in the UI whenever you will configure the uh, target application. Then it will not uh, list those uh, namespaces. Then uh, we we will add a force disconnect option to clean all uh, to clean all the resources. 
so uh, right now uh, as part of a whenever, whenever we are uh, deleting so okay. so whenever we are uh, whenever, whenever we are deleting the infra so uh, we we need to uh, it will delete from the ui and it will give you some un, uh, command which we need to run the cluster so we we will give a force delete option as well which will uh, automatically delete it and then next uh, the next thing is a gitops support for the azure git right now we are uh, directly connected it, uh, we are not uh, connect we can we can't connect from the azure git right now then we can connect from the azure git as well the chaos of if, if if that is uh, hosted on the azure git and then uh, if you are use, uh, i mean we are using uh, kube api uh, we, we 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 are using kubernetes uh, for the kubernetes experiments then if uh, sometimes we see uh, because of some kube api some uh, throttling or because of some reason sometimes the kube api is failing so we can add a retry we, we will add a retry there uh, which will uh, you know make sure that it will run always and then uh, next thing is for the unit tests and e2e coverage then we will keep adding the unit tests in the first test to increase the coverage yeah so i'm um, uh, you can you can join the kubernetes slack in uh, in the kubernetes slack you can join the litmus channel and we have a contrib fest for the litmus at 2:30 then you can scan this qr code for the contrib fest and uh, if, if there is any feedback you can uh, scan this qr code and give the feedback yeah thanks for listening us uh, we are open for the questions